Hi everyone. So we are in the second lockdown at the moment. Um, not a great time for a lot of people, but we obviously we have to make the most the most of a you know not a great time. So I thought I would start doing some workshops for you. So keep you entertained at home. You're gonna have a little bit more time to try some different things. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the workshops. Um, this first one is going to be raw chocolate. Now I'm a massive chocolate fan. Absolutely love chocolate. Um, even the naughty kind, to be honest with you. But when I found this raw recipe and discovered how easy it was to make, I haven't really looked back because I actually find it, it's delicious, it's healthy, so I don't feel guilty when I'm eating it. And you can make it so many different ways. You know, you can add different flavors to it. You can make them for gifts as well. You can, you know, make bars or make bark or make little chocolates. So um, it's just really fun, I think. And definitely if you're stuck at home with the kids, it's probably a great thing for you to do with the kids as well at this time. Um, I'm just waiting a little bit longer before I start just to make sure people are coming on board, but we'll be starting very, very soon. And some of the other things we'll be talking about today is other gifts that you can make as well, because we've got Christmas coming up. We're not allowed to go out shopping, so why not make gifts? You know, what a great idea. Um, we've got our Thermomix. Um, which is the best tool that we can have in the kitchen for eating, for feeding our family, but also for making lovely edible gifts. So we're going to be chatting about that today. Um, I also make lots of other things. Now, we're not really, as advisors, we're not really meant to talk about things that aren't um, food related with our Thermomix, but everything that I make is with edible products. So I'm not putting any chemicals in my bowl. So I'm not, even if somebody ate it by mistake, it wouldn't be an issue. And one of those things is things like sugar scrubs or body butters. Again, we're using coconut oil, we're using sugar, we're using coffee, chocolate, um, orange. So we're using natural products, things that you can actually eat. Um, but also they're so much better for you as well. And they make amazing gifts as well for Christmas. So that's something else you can think about. Um, so I think I can see lots of people joining. Hi everyone, lovely to see you all. I hope you enjoy the workshop and feel free to ask questions. I will try to keep an eye um, on the questions if I can, um, but obviously I'll be doing this so I will try my best. If I don't get to answer all the questions, I'll definitely have a look back after the live video and try and answer anything. Um, so please do feel free to comment and like um, all of my workshops and all of my previous videos. They're all on my YouTube channel, which is called Food in the Mix, the same as this page. So feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos and inspiration. Okay, I think we're going to start, shall we? So the first thing we're going to do is um, I'm going to be using, let me show you, I have it here ready. There we go, do, 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 do. going all the way to the beginning. So I'm going to be using this recipe on cookie dough. It's a really good base and from this base we can do lots of different things. This recipe in particular says raw chocolate snaps. Now we're not going to be making the snaps today, but we are using the raw chocolate recipe because it is very good and uh, it's a great base for you to then add other things and turn it into something different. And I'll give you some ideas as well of how you can make it slightly different for maybe more child friendly if the chocolate's too strong or um, just different flavors. So um, here we are, uh, raw chocolate snaps. Um, if anybody is cooking along and has all the ingredients, I'm just giving you a few minutes so you can find it, you can search it in your cookie dough and find it. I'm just going to check at the very bottom. It doesn't tell me here. Let me check on my iPad. Um, I'm just going to make sure, I think it is in the UK cookie do, but I'm just going to have a very quick look in case it's not. And that way you can filter. Remember if you want to find, yes, it is in the United Kingdom. Yep, so it is, you can find it by searching in the UK cookie do. It comes from a collection called 
whole food cooking, which has some really brilliant recipes on there. To, so make sure you check that collection out, whole food cooking. Um, right, so hopefully you're all up and running. I'm now going to start weighing all the ingredients. So let's have a look, start cooking. Um, the instructions are telling me to grease and line two small baking trays. Now, I'm not gonna do this today because I have chocolate molds. However, if you don't have any chocolate molds, then two baking trays, if you can line them with either parchment paper or a silicon mat, that would be great and that will get you started. There we go. Thoroughly clean and dry the mixing bowl. The mixing bowl has to be really dry, which I've already done. I've already given it a really good clean and a dry. So if your mixing bowl has any water in it, just make sure that you give it a really good dry with a tea towel, okay? Next. Okay, so now the first ingredient is the cacao butter. Um, let me show you. So this is cacao butter. This is from an online shop called The Sopery. You can find cacao butter online quite easily. There's a wonderful online shop called The Real Food Source that has wonderful, wholesome product, you know, ingredients for all these things. But this is what you get. This is cacao butter. You can buy it in pellets as well, but I think it's more expensive and I actually quite like just buying the raw stuff. And all I had to do today was chop it down a little bit because they're quite big chunks so you don't really want to put huge chunks in your thermix bowl so this is what you do just chop it down so I did pre-weight and chop it first 200 grams let's pop it in there I'm guessing some of you if you're cooking along you may have bought pellets so that's quite easy to just pop in and chop let's press next Let's insert our lid and measuring cup. Okay, so we're going to chop this now. It's going to be 20 seconds. It is going to be a bit noisy, so I'll be quiet for a minute. So let's scrape down the sides. Oops, oops, easy. Didn't put that on very well, did I? Okay, so let me show you. So we've just chopped it down. It's kind of gone into a bit of a paste because if you see the cacao butter, you could actually um, use it as cream on your hands as well because it's got all that lovely healthy fat that actually works really well in moisturizers so this is another great ingredient to make body butters and moisturizers but today we're going to be eating it so let's pop this back on insert the measuring with the measuring cup okay so this is going to go on now for 10 minutes because we're going to start the melting process um so as you see with the guided cooking it's come up automatically so we've got 10 minutes 37 degrees and speed one so I'm going to turn that on wonderful so while this is cooking I'm just going to move it slightly over here I just want to show you where we're going to be putting so I hope you can see so this is one of my chocolate silicon molds as you can see they're very sweet they've got different kind of flowers and they look so pretty when you make them in these. So these are the ideal one for gifts. If you can see, I've got to be very careful, in this one, I've actually added hazelnuts ready to pour the chocolate in. Um, I, for me, hazelnuts and chocolate just go together so well. It's one of my favorite nuts in chocolate. So that's what I've chosen today, but you could put any nuts in here. You could even put dried cranberries, pistachios, it, even seeds. So. It, Ginger, you know, um, crystallized ginger is really nice as well. Um, so there's so many things you can add to your chocolate and it's as easy as just popping it in there before you put the chocolate in. So that's uh, two of my silicone molds ready. The other thing I've got ready are these. Today we're going to be making peanut butter cups. So for peanut butter cups, 
I have these little very tiny molds and I've got them all ready. I like putting them in a container like this because it keeps them all together and it stops it kind of expanding once I've added the chocolate, which is quite liquidy when you first put it in. Now, these are the little cases. They're so cute, aren't they? They're really cheap to buy. I think I spent about 99p on a box of 200. This is the last batch that I bought, so they really are cheap to buy. And it's something that's very easy to have in your little crafty you know, thing ready for when you want to make chocolates or anything else. So what we do with these is that we add some, a little bit of a small layer of chocolate at the bottom, then we add the peanut butter, and then we top it with another layer of chocolate and then let that set. And that's how you make peanut butter cups. They are delicious, one of my favorite things. You could use almond butter if you prefer, if you don't like having peanuts. Um, in my house, we're all fans of peanut butter, so we do like a lot of peanut butter and everything. And that's what I'll be doing today. But these are the little cases. And as I said, that's about um, 99p for 200 or so. So very, very simple. Um, so we're going to be making these as a gift. Um, but there are lots of other things that you can make for gifts this year for Christmas, for example. You know, we're stuck at home. We've got plenty of time. And also, you know, we can't really get to the shops easily. Something to entertain the kids at the weekend whilst they're not at school. So what I'm going to show you is some other ideas for you to use as gifts this Christmas to make. So I've, what I've done is in my cookie do, which is, see, that's my cookie do there. So I've created a gift collection. So if you can have a look on my cookie do, if I go down, 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 there we go. So I've created a gift collection and this is where I put all the things, all the, all the recipes, not all the things, all the recipes I find on Cookie Do that I think oh, that would make a great gift for Christmas. I just add it to my list and then when it comes around to, you know, just before Christmas, I've got this lovely list of things ready to go and I can just have a look and see, well, what haven't I made yet? Because obviously, a lot of my family have already tasted some of the chutneys and the things that I make, so I always try and give them something different and something new every year. So some of the things you could be making um, as a gift, cordials, berry cordial, elderflower cordial, if you can get hold of it, that is so delicious homemade and very, very easy to make. And you can get these lovely little glass bottles and present them really nicely. Other things you can make is peppermint sugar cubes, peanut brittle, um, orange Campari marmalade, that is delicious, I must say. It just is so zesty. It has a really, if you like, kind of sharp marmalade. This is the one for you, you must try it. Jalapeno lime and coconut cashews. Now I love roasted nuts, and I think well, there's quite a few recipes on Cookie Do that are, you know, that give you different flavors, um, so please do look for all sorts of different spice nuts, roasted nuts. I really like sweet nuts with honey. They are so delicious. So please give that a try. Classic chocolate fudge. I mean, fudge is amazing. It's so easy to make in your Thermomix because you have, you have precise temperatures and something that would be quite more labor intensive to do on, the, on your hob you can actually make it in your thermics and fudge is one of the things that I've been making right from the beginning. So delicious. Again, you can make different flavors with the chocolate, chocolate orange or, you know, mint chocolate, or you can do salted caramel, but that is another lovely gift. Um, another one which I love is hot, cho hot chocolate on a stick. This is quite child friendly. Let me show you the photo here. Can you see the picture? Doesn't that look cool? And see, they've added little mini marshmallows on top as well. So again, so easy to make. Thermomix is melting the chocolate for me. Remember, if you just want to use milk chocolate or dark chocolate, or if I use that, I normally do a mixture of both, half and half, half dark and half milk chocolate, and that gives a really good consistency for hot chocolate. But that's such a really lovely gift for children. My kids love hot chocolate, so it's a big thing here at home. Um, other ideas, salted caramels, 
Um, obviously you've got all sorts of biscuits. Any cookies are lovely for a Christmas gift. One of the ideas we have here, which is really nice for Christmas, is the red and green Christmas shortbread. That's a really good one. And it just looks really funky. So I love that one. So that's the red and Christmas, red and green Christmas shortbread. Obviously gingerbread men, Ben's cookies as well. I love Ben's cookies. Uh, here in Brighton, we've got a, sh a Ben's cookie shop. And I must admit, naughty but nice. Gosh, do I love their cookies. And we have a really good recipe on cookie dough. So make sure you find it. And what about drinks? We mentioned cordial earlier on, but you can make egg cognac liqueur. You can make like a Bowles Advocat egg liqueur. You could make Baileys. Um, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And all these things are absolutely lovely for gifts, okay? So please do look at all the drinks that you can make. Um, for more ideas. So edible chocolate chip cookie dough. Now this is a very American thing. Look, can you see it comes in a really nice container, lovely little gift. But if you know any kids who love cookie dough, like my daughter does, that is a really cool gift. Okay, so what else do we have? So lots of, um, of obviously any type of chutney is amazing, okay? Um, any type of jam, people will love you for it. But if you're doing it for Christmas, just make sure that you, instead of just making a strawberry jam, do some other flavours that may be a bit more Christmassy or something that people can't find in the shops. That always, I find, really helps. If it's a kind of jam or chutney that's not readily available in the shops as well, it's not just delicious because it's homemade, it's also a little bit different. So some ideas are chilli and apple jelly, rhubarb and strawberry jam, and then of I've got one here that's piccalilli. It's a very old fashioned UK kind of um, thing to make kind of chutney, but people love it and it's full of lovely vegetables inside and it's actually really easy to make. So that's another thing that you can do. Um, more ideas as well is vanilla sugar. Vanilla sugar or infused sugar. Obviously with our Thermomix we can grind our sugar down really easily, but we can infuse it with lemon, with orange, with vanilla, with ginger. Um, you name it, anything, and all you have to do is pop your sugar, pop some, say for example, orange rind, lemon rind, or vanilla paste, um, vanilla, you know, the inside of the vanilla pod, sorry, not vanilla paste, and you grind it down for about 10 seconds, and that is it. That is what a quick Christmas gift that is to make. So lots of really good ideas. And then finally, um, another great idea is cookie jars and but um, not cookies made but actually now one of my fellow uh, advisors and team leaders okay now she did a workshop for this on the official Thermomix website her page is called Mix Every Day with Jenny and she made this lovely cookie jar where she adds all the ingredients she weighs them on her Thermomix and then you give this to your friends and then they obviously have to make the cookies at home but what a lovely idea for especially for children as well and this is cranberry and pistachio cookie cut um cookie gift jar okay and another thing you could do apart from giving them the cookie jar is also give them some cookie cutters and that would make a really lovely gift so the jar and some cookie cutters for children could be a really good fun christmas gift Oh wow, that's good timing, because I've pretty come to the end. Now, if you have any more ideas for Christmas gifts that I haven't mentioned, please pop it in the comments and share it with us because I'm always learning and I'm always wanting to hear about what you guys are cooking and, and just get other ideas, you know, because we all run out of ideas sometimes, even with our wonderful cookie do that has over 50,000 recipes. Uh, it's still really nice to hear what other people are making, you know, and get some inspiration. Right, so let's have a look at this. I'm going to bring my Thermix back. Remember that I'm lifting it, I'm not dragging because um, the scales are in the legs, they're a little bit, um, they're a little bit delicate and we really don't wanna be dragging the feet and that would decalibrate the scale. So always pick up and move over. So I'm just going to show you, now it's not quite ready yet as you can see, just going to make sure it's all at the bottom, get the sides in. Let's have a look. Okay. 
and we're going to pop it back on. So let's, pre let's press next. Scrape down the sides, which I've just done. Let's press next. Okay, so because it hasn't quite melted, I'm going to pop it back on a tiny bit, okay? Just to make sure it does melt thoroughly. So I'm gonna pop it over here and I'm going to turn the temperature up ever so slightly and pop it on again. And I'll just check it in five minutes or so because I think it just needs a little bit longer. So we've had a look at the molds. I'm just going to show you some other molds that I have for chocolate. So obviously we've got our Christmas trees, very Christmassy. So these are quite nice. I have another set of chocolate molds, but look, these have like a little present with a bow. So these are really nice for either Christmas or just for a birthday present, actually. They would look really, really sweet. So that's another mold that I really like. I have Lego men as well, which I bought for my son once, and they're really good if you're making little gifts for children. And finally, I have just a very simple mold for um, a bar of chocolate, which again, really nice. You can pop the chocolate in, you can even sprinkle with coconut or, you know, chopped nuts or something, um, goji berries, things like that, and that's also really delicious. So those are my silicon mats. And then, so you make all these lovely chocolates and you want to give them somebody for a gift. So where do you put them? So this is what I tend to make. Have a look at these. So basically, these are made out of leftover paper plates that I have in my little cupboard and a bit of tissue paper and some lace. So see? These are, that one says party at the bottom, that's left over from one of my son's parties, I think. And as you can see, they look very pretty. And if I open one up, okay, so I have some tissue paper that I open up, it's kind of double-ended, and that's where your chocolates would go. So very sweet. And again, very eco-friendly, because if you're recycling, things that you've got, you know, old plates that you haven't used from parties. Um, let me check, let me show you how to make these. This is another one that I made um, with a plain paper plate. Now, I like this one because it's something maybe to give the kids um, to actually decorate and that would be really good fun. So that's another little crafty thing that you can do, just use plain paper plates and let the kids decorate it. They have to decorate the back of the plate um, sorry, the middle, the, the middle of the plate, and then you turn it around and it's all there. So just remember that. And let me show you how easy it is to make these. So here we have a plate. So obviously we want the lovely pattern to be on the outside. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the circle. That's gonna tell me where I need to fold. And I'm just gonna fold it round four times so I hope that you can see. So, so that's one fold, okay? And as you can see, I did it pretty much where the round bit in the middle is. That's given me place. So now I'm going to keep folding. I'm going to fold the opposite side like so, okay? And then I'm going to fold again the opposite sides. So that's another fold there. As you can see, it's all coming into shape. Then I'm gonna do one more fold. Okay, so that's all of the four sides folded. Now we have some scissors. So I'm going to cut. Now, just wanna show you where to cut. Let me see, can you see there? So on the right-hand side, there's like a triangle, and I'm just going to cut one side of the triangle up and where, up to where the square is. So we turn it completely round and on the other side we do the same. We cut that side of the triangle and we keep working our way round. We cut again where the fold is up to where the triangle is and then again we will cut one more time. Okay, like so. And then we can now fold them up and see we're left with this little flap here. So that flap goes in there 
Oh, I don't think I've got my sellotape. What, what do I do with my sellotape? Basically, if you use glue, you're going to get a better finish because that's going to close really well. But otherwise, all you have to do is put some sellotape in the middle there. So as you can see, every flap on every side, you just fold it over, fold the next flap up, fold the next flap up again, and that's it. Voila, that's your lovely box. That's how easy it is to make a box from a plate. Now let me show you, because I have a little variation to that one. Say for example, if you want to give cookies as a gift, you if you make, see this plate here, instead of being a square, it's more of a rectangle. So what I did is one side, I've made some lines there for you to see. One of the sides, you actually fold it, instead of folding on the crease, on the round crease, I actually went in a little bit more. So I do like that to make a rectangle. And then the sides, I fold them where the creases of the round plate. So as you can see, and I've cut, there you go. So that's where I cut, where at the end of the rectangle, I do two cuts. And then when you fold it up, you put your little corners out like that. Now I do recommend that you do that with glue rather than sellotape, because it will look much prettier. So that's that there, okay, that one there. And then another thing I did, Obviously the ends of the plate have these lovely grooves here. Can you see what I've done with that one? So basically, if you cut the grooves, like so, you see what I'm doing. <laughs> My eyes are getting terrible now. Okay, so you just cut all the way along and then you just fold them back and kind of give them a little bit of and see, that gives it a lovely little zingy thing. And again, you can decorate these, you can put a bow all around them as well, which would look really pretty. And now the last thing I'm gonna show you how to make is the insert. So this is half a sheet of tissue paper. So I cut a whole sheet of tissue paper in half. And now I'm gonna fold that in half one more time. So I'm not sure you can see with the camera but I've literally folded that in half one more time, like so. And then we're going to pop that in your box. Let me do it up high so you can see. Oops. There we are. And then once you've put the chocolates in or whatever you make, you know, if you make toffee or honeycomb or anything, so then you simply fold it over and pop it in there and then you're going to do, sorry, let's do that properly, fold it over, and then you're going to do the other side, and again, you're going to tuck it, okay? Tuck it inside, there we go, that's it. And then all you have to do is get some lovely lace or some string, anything that you might have lying around, and tie and make this lovely cute little box, isn't that sweet? So that's our gift boxes. Um, a couple of other things while this is finishing is um, you can also pop them in jars, glass jars, they're really lovely for gifts, even for chocolate, something unusual. Depends how many chocolates you want to give, but these are really good. Um, this is material that I've cut out from old bits of material that I had. Now these are for jam jars, obviously to put on top, but you could also make a lovely cloth instead of using tissue paper or do tissue paper and then cover it in some lovely cloth. So that's another idea. And then the last thing is, don't forget to put a label. Now these labels are made out of old Christmas cards. So I always recycle the Christmas cards that I've been sent from the year before. Um, and as you can see, it's very easy. You just need um, some lovely fancy scissors to cut around, a little hole punch and some string, any kind of string. Now, when you give edible gifts, you should always really put the ingredients because so many people have allergies this day and you really don't want to send somebody to A&E on Christmas day. So if you can, the name of your gift and all the ingredients that are inside would be perfect on your little label. And that would really, you know, that'll make it all look very, very pretty as well. So there you go. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to check um, to see if our cocoa is ready. Oh, it's only got 45 seconds now. 
it should yeah it's ready now so i thought it might be so let me show you what it looks like when it's melted oh look at that okay so that's our cocoa okay let's press next scrape down the sides which i've done I tend to do that automatically these days so now we're going to add our cocoa or cacao powder now it's up to you what you want to purchase you can also buy cacao nibs and you can grind them down in your foam mix i also do that um i do have because i make quite a bit of chocolate and hot chocolate in this house i do have a massive bag of cacao powder i get cacao powder because my kids prefer it to cocoa sorry this is cocoa powder because my kids prefer it to cacao but it's still very natural and it's still um much much healthier than buying the stuff that you get in the shop so um it says 50 to 60 grams i'm going to add that now oops 20 and that should be approximately A bit more, ah, tiny bit more. I think it's sticking to my spoon. There we go. That's 50 grams. Now, I've added 50 grams because my kids don't want the chocolate very dark and very strong, so I always do it a little bit with the less cacao. Um, the other thing you could do if your kids prefer like more like milk chocolate is that, well, one, you can reduce the cacao obviously, but also you could add some milk powder that would also help to have more of a milky flavor also, and it's still quite healthy. So let's press next. So raw honey. So I have, I'm very blessed because my husband works with somebody who makes honey. Well, obviously not him, the bees that he's got. Um, so this is some lovely raw honey, and I've dipped the spoon in some boiling water so that it doesn't stick, and we need 100 grams of honey just get well that is sticking isn't it that's better so 34 a little bit more you could use maple sugar if uh, maple syrup if you want to do or a gave nectar or you could even grind and pop proper sugar if you wanted to or um some lovely raw sugar you could grind it down very very fine like icing sugar and then put it in so it's up to you really i mean some people like to use sweeteners um, which would be fine also. So how you sweeten it is entirely up to you. We don't want to give it too much flavor. Right, so that's our honey that's gone in. Let's press next. One teaspoon of vanilla bean. So I don't have vanilla bean. I actually make my own vanilla extract with, I don't know if you can see the pods inside. So this is a bottle of vodka basically, that's had pods in there for quite a few months now. And that's my lovely vanilla extract. Oh, it smells divine. Now, even though it's in vodka, this is going to evaporate and you're just gonna be left with the lovely vanilla flavor. There we go. Let's press next. One tiny pinch of fine sea salt. Just remember salt, it always brings out the flavor of anything sweet. Very, very small amount. Pop the lid on, let's press next, and we're going to turn that round. Okay. So, some more ideas. Other ways that you can give your edible gifts is obviously cellophane bags. These are a few I had left over from last year. It says baked with love. Now you can find all these things in places like Hobbycraft, probably Amazon, eBay. Um, it's really handy to have these little cellophane. Not everybody likes to use plastic though, but you could also use paper bags. Paper bags are great. They sell very small, like sweet ones. Um, I saw my sister-in-law had some the other day with some Halloween sweets, and they are also great for giving gifts. Maybe not so good for um, chocolates because chocolates are a little bit greasy, so it might not look as good, but certainly for other things it would be quite good to use paper bags. Um, and then, these stickers are really handy because if you ever need to seal 
So see here like so, you could actually, I like to fold these over a little bit. This is the one we made before. If you fold that over, right, let's do that again. Excuse me. So I like to fold the end over so it looks more pretty. And then we go like this. Now, if we use one of these labels, so you could write the name of the product on here. So chocolate truffles or chocolate, um, you know, uh, peanut butter cups and you seal. See what I mean? That doesn't look, it looks a bit messy. I would normally do that a bit better. But stickers like this, that looks really pretty. And that's where you can put the name of what you're, what you're gifting the person. I would still add a label with the ingredients though. I can't stress how important that is that you do add the, the ingredients on. But that looks really pretty with the name of your product. So these are all different ways that you can use your gifts. And then of course you have your glass jars. Now the glass jars are ideal. Again, these stickers for example, or anything like this, I, what I would do on a glass jar is put a sticker in the front with the name of the product and then on the back a sticker with the ingredients on. Really, really important. And actually, another thing I should mention is the date. Whenever we make edible food or edible products, um, it has a, a, a shorter shelf life because it hasn't got any preservatives, it hasn't got any e numbers of course, which is great, but it means things don't last as long. Now, when you use recipes, it should give you an idea of how long something will last. Um, but if you're not too sure, something like a lemon curd, for example, has a shelf life of two or three weeks. But clearly a jam will have a much longer shelf life. And if you sterilize your jars properly, it's, it will even have a much longer shelf life. So that's really important as well, that you sterilize your glass jars thoroughly. And the great thing is, you can sterilize them in your Varoma on your Thermomix, which is fantastic. So don't forget, your Varoma is great for sterilizing your glass jars. And if you haven't heard, baby bottles, really good for sterilizing baby bottles as well, your Varoma. It's not just, uh, I always say that to my customers, it's not just for steaming vegetables, you can do so much in your Varoma. And this is one of the things that you can do, sterilize your jars when you're making jams, chutneys, etc but anytime you're going to put food even if you put chocolate sterilize your jars it's just peace of mind really um i was going to mention something else i can't remember now i've just got off track um oh what was i going to say i've just i've started talking about the sterilizing and then i completely forgot um other products that you can do is also the homemade stock Remember, we're very fortunate, we have a thermix, we can make our own homemade stock. It's delicious, we know it's delicious. But people who don't own a thermomix, you know, make them homemade stock, they will love it, they will absolutely love it. Um, later on this week, I'm going to be doing a live with red uh, pepper and chili jam. Now that is one of, it's like a staple in our house. We love that chili jam with cheese, it's just divine and my mother-in-law loves it, so I'm constantly trying to top her up, but it is another great gift. So keep an eye out for my a red pepper and chili jam workshop, which I'll be doing later on this week. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention as well is chocolates. You can freeze your chocolates. So if you want to make a big batch of chocolates for gifts for Christmas, you can pop them in the freezer and then take them out and gift them, you know, box them up and gift them. So um, for sterilizing, Somebody's just asked a question, how long do you leave the jars in the Varoma for sterilizing? Now, I would leave them for a good half hour, okay? So half hour, um, temperature, Varoma temperature, clearly, and a good half hour. You could leave them longer if you wanted, but half an hour minimum. If I do them at 140 degrees in my oven, I normally do it for 20 minutes, but in the Varoma, I would leave it for a good half hour, okay? And just remember, if you're adding like a hot jam or a hot chuck, you know, something that you've just cooked that's come out of here. You want your jars to be warm as well because if you put something very hot into a very cold jar, it could crack or split the jar, okay? So just remember that as well. Right, so I'm gonna have a look at this. I think this is almost ready because we did melt it for a little bit longer before. So don't ever be afraid to have a good look inside. Okay, so some of the cocoa has 
stayed on the blade. So I'm just giving it a bit of a, a mix. Do, do, do. Right. I'm just gonna put that on for a few more seconds. So that cocoa mixes and then it's ready, it's ready to pop in. And what I want to show you is a few different flavors that we're gonna to use today. Okay. Right, so the first thing I need is my silicon mat. Let's, I'll move a couple of things out of the way so you can see. Oh no, actually, I've changed my mind. I'm going to make the peanut butter cups first because I don't want to add any flavor to this one. So I've got my peanut butter ready. Just remember, really easy to make your own nut butters. It takes about two or three minutes. Um, you don't add any oil any other ingredients. I like adding a tiny pinch of salt and actually a tiny bit of pinch of sugar, of coconut sugar, because I like that sweet and saltness going on in the peanut butter, but really easy to make. So we have all our cups here ready to go. And the first thing we need to do, let me scrape this down. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is pour, I hope you can see, now this, you've got to go very, very slowly because you just want to coat, and I'll show you in a second, you just want to coat the bottom. I'm going to see if I can direct the camera down a little bit more. You don't really need to see me. I just want you to see what's going on there. So let's pop. Da, 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 da. Okay, just go around everyone very slowly so you don't fill the whole cup. Just a little drizzle at the bottom. Now this chocolate does go hard very quickly. So you've got to kind of work quickly with this. Now remember, if you're working with chocolate um, and you don't want it to go hard in the bowl, we do have a warming function, which you could just put on at you know spoon stirring speed and just to make sure that the chocolate doesn't go hard while we're doing, because now we're going to be adding some peanut butter. So I'm not gonna fill them all, so I don't take too much time. And then I normally just take two spoons, take a little bit of peanut butter, and with the other spoon, I drop it into the cup. I hope you can see there. So I'm just gonna drop the peanut butter in the cup, like so. Do, 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 do. There we go. You could wait for the chocolate to go hard if you wanted to, but obviously today I don't want to keep you waiting. Um, so it might peak out at the other end when you've made the cup, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter. But um, if you want it to be completely enclosed inside the chocolate, then all you have to do is wait for it to go hard, which doesn't take long. And you could pop it in the fridge as well to make it the process quicker. So here we go. So I've got two more to go. What I'll do is I'll post pictures because obviously these need to go hard again. I will post pictures at the end so you can see what they look like when they're finished. So let's add a little bit more chocolate here now until we cover. Whoops, I almost dropped that. There we go very slowly because it comes out very quickly. It's very liquidy at the moment. Cover those up. I, quite, I find this quite satisfying actually making chocolate. I love, it's like a chocolate fountain pouring out of the bowl. Yum, yum. But as I said, this is quite kind of dark chocolate. So if you want to make it lighter, add less cacao powder, maybe add a little bit of either um, milk powder or coconut milk powder and that will also make it kind of a lighter so there you go so that is our cups filled up and ready now what i'll do with those is i'll pop them in the fridge and they should be ready um probably in about an hour or even less so it is quite a quick process so i'm going to do some plain chocolate ones now so this is as simple as filling the mold up so there we go. It's good to have a little spatula ready to stop the flow. There we go, another little bit. 
Wow. I love, love watching the chocolate pour out. Just want to, um, I just want to lick it, which I shouldn't really be doing. So, there we go. I'll fill these in. Try, got to go slowly because otherwise it pours out very, very quickly. There we go. Now, if you don't have the moulds and you're making chocolate snaps, um, all you have to do is pour the chocolate onto your tray. Make sure you, with a silicon or with a spatula, you make sure that it, it's very even on all sides and then just sprinkle anything that you want to sprinkle on it. It can be nuts, it can be goji berries or cranberries or, you know, a mixture of coconut and some orange zest, um, ginger, crystallized ginger bits. I mean, that's delicious as well. So you can do anything you want. That's it. So that's my chocolate ready here. I'm just going to add a tiny bit more. Some of these are a bit empty. It pours out so quickly that I didn't want them to overflow. So I'm just pouring a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, done. So I've got one more silicon mold to go, the one that has the hazelnuts. But what I'm going to do is now with the leftover chocolate, I would like to flavor it. What I'm gonna to use today, now you can flavor it with anything that you like. I mean, you could be using uh, peppermint, orange, um, you know, caramel, anything that you like. Today, I'm going to be using some, a couple of drops of orange essential oil. Now, not everybody likes using essential oil in cooking. I use this uh, company called doTERRA only because their essential oil is okay for ingesting, but you could use essence of orange, you could use any flavoring that you buy in the shops. Um, you could even use some coffee, it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna pop a couple of these. You really don't need too much. Essential oils are very, very powerful. And then I just wanna mix it a little bit. So let's pop that on for I'm going to put it up to speed to let that mix for a few seconds, not too long. Let that essential oil get all the way around. And then we're going to fill our cups and that will make hazelnut and orange little chocolates, which are yummy, I love. I'm not a huge fan of peppermint and chocolate, even though a lot of people love it. So feel free to choose the flavors that you really love. Okay, that should be ready. in oh it looks beautiful another thing you could do as well if I may say is that you could grind some sugar with orange uh, zest and that would also instead of using honey and that would be another way of flavoring your chocolates naturally so there's lots of different ways to do it um, and you just have to find what you really like you know because we all have different uh, taste buds and different ideas and it, it just doesn't really matter, just find. I love hazelnut, some people would love pistachios, pistachios in their thingy. I don't really like peppermint and other people absolutely love it. So you have to choose the flavors that you really like. There we go, almost gone. A bit more. Okay, here we are. Right, so I've still got chocolate left. So as you can see, we've made quite a huge amount, quite a few chocolates with one load. But look, there's my silicon, they're ready to go. Now this needs to go in the fridge. So what I'll do is that I will um, take a picture when they're ready, come out so you can see the final effect. Um, I'll pop them in the boxes as well and take some pictures for you in the boxes. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, please, if you make them, post pictures, show us what you've done. You, you might have different silicon moulds, you might have done something different if you've made the bark, we'd love to see it as well. And give us ideas of what flavors you use because this is what this is all about. All of us in our Thermix community, sharing our ideas, sharing our flavors and, uh, and seeing what other people are up to because I really get inspired 
looking in other people's pages and in other people's groups. I think it's fantastic. We're all so passionate about food and about healthy food. And I think that's what it's all about, you know, um, and we need to stick together at this time. You know, it's worrying times, but we'll get through it together. So uh, let's have fun. Let's enjoy our Thermomix at this time. Um, kids will love uh, making things like chocolate and making the gift boxes and decorating the boxes as well. So this is this this hopefully I've given you a few ideas for you to to do. Um, it's been a pleasure showing you how I make my raw homemade chocolate. I hope you enjoy it. Oh, which cookie dough recipe was this? So I used. Uh, a recipe called Raw Chocolate Snaps, which is in the UK Cookie Doo, in a collection called Whole Foods. But if you just search in Cookie Doo, you'll be able to find it, okay? So, uh, any more questions before I go? No? Well, anyway, if you have questions afterwards, just pop it in the comments and I'll have a look through. Um, I hope you have a lovely, lovely weekend. I hope you've enjoyed the workshop. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, everyone. Bye.